Um, I think if you speak to the business community, which we'll do now, um, the answer is unequivocally yes. Let's speak to Danny McCoy, who's the CEO of IBEC, Jeff, because I want to bring him in on that very key issue. Jeff was pointing out that in Davos, the Taoiseach was very bullish about the Irish economy. Danny, you are very bullish about the prospects for corporate Ireland, aren't you? Yeah, I have been since uh, 2009. We saw the turnaround in the real economy 2009. So even before the Troika arrived here, the business community had adjusted. Our unit labor costs had gone down. Competitors were restored. We were having record years for exports in 10, 11, 12, and again this year. So we've seen the turnaround, and the domestic economy is coming good as well now. We've seen employment growth. So the Irish economy is set fair. We're entering a more virtuous circle, having been in a vicious one for half a decade. You know where I stand on this. I think, great. I'm glad Ireland's back. I've seen it through the crisis. I was here in 08 and 09. But I have real concerns about the legacy issues, and I can go on ad infinitum about the state of the banking sector, the concerns about uncapitalized, uncapitalized banks, about the unemployment rate, even though you say the direction of travel is very good, and about the broader state debts as well. Are none of these issues going to drag down Irish corporates? Well, the corporate market is very globalised to start with, but you're right, the legacy debt is a drag on the economy, and I think that gets reflected in the, in the level of taxation. I think one of the big issues we really have to address domestically is we now have a high average income tax on high earners. And so as a globalised nation, we need to start to reduce those taxes. And that's why I think that the government's activities in trying to get the retrofitting of the debt from the banking uh, off the public finances is also very important, because we feel it in business, we feel it particularly in the labour market. So you think, just on that one issue, you think there's a chance that this 125% debt to GDP, this 85 billion euros that was bought, borrowed from the Troika, you think there's a chance that Ireland's going to get some of that money back then still? Well, the government is in negotiations for that, but that's not the main issue. The main issue is whether the potential growth rate can be achieved. And we, we see a 3 to 4% volume growth. So you're, you're talking about a modicum of inflation of 2%. This economy can double in size in a 13-year period. So it can half its debt to GDP ratios without paying back a cent of the debt. Now you talk about the tax issue. I, I do want to follow up on that because um, there's academic research just in the last 24 hours that says the effective tax rate for US corporations is 2.2%. Yet the T-Shock and others will say that is not the rate. The rate is about 11.9 or 12.5, depending on which model you use, because the official rate being the latter. But the fact is, American corporates are coming here in part because they're getting low single-digit taxes. Surely that's, that's something that we can all admit, yeah? Certainly, they're, they're globalised, so that they're established here in Ireland and they trade out of Ireland, and a lot of them have huge substance here. But on, in, in many spaces, in the e-digital, where you have establishments which are not paying effective tax rate, all of Irish business wants to see a clamp down on that. The effective tax rate for domestic companies is a 12.5%. Uh, so we're, we're talking about effective tax rates when you take account of some losses, etc., in the high... 11% uh, or so. But globalised firms are trading internationally. They're hubbed out of Ireland. There is substance here in activity. And if there's a coordinated approach, as is going on at the OECD in this base erosion profit shifting, I think Ireland is going to be part of that. Our budget has actually moved in that direction to clamp down on companies that are established here but don't have any substance here. So you don't have any concerns that some of the critics of Ireland say it's got tax haven status at the moment. The fact is the double Irish Dutch sandwich is creating a situation where corporates can come here, actually have very few of their activities here uh, and indeed enjoy a 2.2% average tax rate compared with, let's say, Irish income tax, which is 41% above 32,800 for your average worker. It just doesn't seem that your worker stroke corporate balance is quite right in Ireland. Well, uh, well, Irish people are, are, are fairly sanguine about the fact that we're a peripheral nation and an island nation for a long time and we become globalised. So people don't get hung up on the ownership structure of, of the capital. But what I would say about what has been dubbed the double Irish, it's a function of the US tax system. It's a US tax system that allows US companies to, to uh, engage in that. And so as part of a concerted effort across the OECD, I think there will be a clampdown on that and people will have to find tax residency. And if they're fully tax resident in Ireland, it's 12.5%. Danny, final question for me. The banking sector, we've got this Anglo-Irish trial going on at the moment. We're still pouring over the history as well. But the current banking sector, is it capitalised anywhere near fully enough in order to fuel uh, loans to SMEs, loans to individuals? Because the last stats I saw saw negative loan growth to both SMEs and indeed to individuals. Well, I think it's, it's clear that there is uh, a lack of demand in the domestic economy. I think confidence is coming back there. Now, on the capitalisation issue, I think they really are really capitalised because one of the things is they've now been, I think, mistakenly forced back in to the Irish economy and that Irish economy has a, a potential growth rate that is actually way ahead of most others so when it comes to stress tests I think the Irish banks are well capitalised. Not often I end an interview by saying this but Danny you were right. There you go. So far, you were right. Danny McCoy, the CEO of IBEC, who, as he says, since 2010, is saying, look, look at our exports, look at our growth potential. We will get through this. Jeff, back to you. 